Next up, I'm very pleased to introduce Nina Easton. Thank you, and good afternoon, everyone. Um, it's an honor to be here. Uh, you might wonder why I'm here with this incredibly esteemed panel. Um, here's the thing. Regardless of where you come down on the nuclear deal, if we're to take um, Secretary Kerry at his word when he says you couldn't address human rights until we get this nuclear issue off the table, uh, I think it behooves us all to know what is the state of human rights in Iran right now. So I've used my repertorial skills to take a look and to summarize for you what, um, what's been taking place. I mean, we, we saw the election of a president in 2013 that people widely thought was going to be a moderating force within that country. So what's, been go what's really been going on, and I think that's going to help us think about how to move forward in the future. So after the 2009 Green, Green Movement protests, the judiciary emerged as a key instrument to intimidate protesters in any form of peaceful dissent, including writings and social media. Obviously, the regime was scared by those protests. And then, despite hopes that the 2013 election of President Rouhani would provide a modernizing or a moderating force, human rights situation has actually worsened, and that's according to in, uh, independent reports by Amnesty International, Human Rights Watch, and so forth, which I will go through in detail right now. Um, in 2014, one year into his presidency, Human Rights Watch reported that quote no significant improvement uh, has happened in human rights, and it concluded that repressive elements in security and intelligence forces and the judiciary retain wide powers and are the main perpetrators of abuse in that country. More recently, and you probably read this because it was just last month, the U.S. State Department accused Tehran of cruel, inhuman, and degrading treatment of its citizens. And Secret Secretary Kerry has said that uh, the sanctions that have to do with human rights will not be lifted. A new Amnesty International report just came out, which was really striking. It says executions could top 1,000 this year. More people are executed per capita than any other country in the world. Amnesty called this a, quote, staggering execution toll that paints a sinister picture of a state machinery carrying out premeditated, judicially, judicially sanctioned killings on a mass scale. But here's the thing to keep in mind, too. What were people killed for? Use of drugs, same-sex relations, adultery, and vaguely worded national security offenses. Children are targets. Iranian law allows capital punishment once a child hits puberty. Get this, for girls, that's age nine. For boys, it's considered age 15. Human Rights Watch um, called Iran the world leader in executing children. And UN Secretary General Ban Ki-moon says at least 160 children are on death row. Beyond executions, Amnesty notes there's a widespread use of torture, flogging, amputations for crimes that include alcohol consumption and eating in public during Ramadan and theft. Amnesty, quote, increasingly said, noted that these are increasingly these punishments are meted out in public, obviously to send a message. On, um, on the front for women, um, despite being more educated, women sp face special hardships, as most of us know, that are built into Iranian law. But just more recently, um, that includes a dress code that equates an improper hijab with being an infidel. So this year, a law was passed further requiring women to observe strict rules on dress. And during the debate on this law last year, some women were attacked with acid for being improperly veiled. I wanted to go, that's sort of an overview, I wanted to give you some individual examples to make you, uh, I always find that personal stories help people understand the situation better. Um, heavy sentences are being meted out against bloggers, journalists, and social media activists. 
Um, Washington Post reporter Jason Rezian is one of four Americans being held in Iran. He's being detained in, and it, he's just spent his one year anniversary there, by the way. It's been one year since he uh, was taken uh, into jail. Uh, he's being detained in the notorious Evan prison, known for cruel and prolonged torture of political opponents. And his trial is being presided over by a judge who's on the EU blacklist for human rights violations. Another case, eight Facebook users were sentenced to a total of 127 years for posting messages that allegedly insulted government officials and religious sanctities. A 29-year-old cartoonist, her name is Atena Fargadani, I hope I said that right, um, she was sentenced to 12 years for being seen as crit critical to the regime, her art, her cartoons being seen as critical. Then get, th get this, when she shook her male lawyer's hand in prison, both were accused of illicit, as illicit sexual relationship just short of adultery, and both will be tried on that charge as well. In addition, seven young men and women arrested last year for dancing to the popular song, Happy, um, which, be, by the way, became a YouTube viral sensation in the country. Um, they were arrested. And women protesting simply to be allowed to attend volleyball games in public have likewise been jailed. So this is an overview. Oh, and I, actually, I was um, more than 200 teachers were arrested Wednesday during a protest outside the parliament in Tehran demanding the release of their colleagues from jail. Authorities launched a crackdown after over 2,000 teachers from across Iran gathered outside parliament carrying placards chanting, free those arrested. Anti-riot police on motorbikes roamed the streets and there was heavy security presence in metro stations. The number of those arrested in today's protest gathering in Tehran has reached 200, the activists said. So I hope that gives you an overview that's useful um, as we go forward. And as Ambassador Smith so eloquently said, um, the real work with Iran has just begun. It's not just about the nuclear issue. It's about uh, the country's support of militant proxies in the region. And it's also about its human rights record. And I think that'll give you a base that enable you to uh, move on and, uh, and continue. I encourage you to, to continue reading the human rights reports as they come out on the country. Thank you.